Welcome to Medicated Housewife DIYs. In today's video, we're going to be making this Pottery Barn dupe wood chain link out of foam hair rollers. It's a high-end home decor look using items found on the ground in your backyard. So let's jump right into this. The supplies we're using for today's project are two packages of foam hair rollers from Dollar Tree. You will want to use the longer of the two different sizes available. A bunch of twigs from your backyard. I soaked mine in a little bleach and water and then I let them fully dry overnight. Some craft paper or some paper grocery bags you might have from around the house. You tear them into squares and crumble them up to make them nice and wrinkly. Some white craft glue mixed with water to make it nice and thin like a paper mache kind of watery consistency. A hot glue gun and glue sticks. Lots and lots of glue sticks. Some wire cutters to snip the twigs into different sizes. You could also use a really strong sharp scissors to do that as well. My Dollar Tree was sold out of the long ones. They only had these short green ones so I ended up ordering two sets of foam rollers from Amazon for about $3 each. They are bigger and slightly longer than the Dollar Tree ones. So if you use Dollar Tree rollers to make these links, the only difference in your chain links may be that they're a little smaller than the ones I'm working on. To begin with, we're going to shape two of the foam rollers into U shapes, and then we're going to glue them together into links. There is a plastic top at the end of each roller and that's what we're going to glue. You glue one side and then you're going to glue the other side and that's how we end up with our first link. In order to reinforce the two links glued together, you'll want to use some duct tape. Make sure the second link as well as all the following links actually link inside the previous link, thus forming a chain. Repeat that process for however many links you want your chain to be. I chose to make five links. You can easily make more or less if you choose. I wanted to give some texture and color to each chain link in case there were gonna be bald spots in between the twigs. And I'm using the craft paper or grocery bags, if that's what you have, torn into pieces and crumbled up and I dip that into the white craft glue and water mixture and we use that to cover the entire foam roller. It's kind of like doing paper mache. I felt like the brown craft paper would look a little bit like tree bark and I'm not gonna lie they all sort of look like rolled cigars but that's okay because we're not finished with them yet. Now, these have been fully dried for a 24-hour period before we started gluing anything. Now, you're going to end up with all kinds of shapes and sizes of twigs. Some of them are flexible, some are rigid. You can manipulate the twigs to wrap around the curves on your link by bending them if it's possible to bend that twig. If not, you can also break them, like slightly break them every inch or so to give them sort of like a joint, you know, and that makes them more pliable. Also, you can always just use your wire cutters to cut them into shorter pieces and just glue them next to each other to follow the line of the curve. The whole point here is we want to hot glue the twigs to cover all of the brown paper so that we don't see any more paper. It ends up being like fitting puzzle pieces into a rounded, curved kind of surface. You just really need to take your time, plot out your next move, think about where you want to put the next twig before you put it there and before you glue anything down. This was a learning experience and I quickly learned that it would be easier if I started gluing the twigs onto the inside curves of each link first and then added twigs working my way out from there. So doing it this way just makes more sense. It seems to be a little neater. It's just basically a more organized approach. I also realized that my efforts to use the tiniest amount of hot glue for each twig was just not going to work. So I'm telling you to be generous with your hot glue and worry about the cleanup later. I cannot tell you how many hot glue burns I got 
while using all this glue and then firmly holding down each and every twig. But I personally think that hot glue burns are what test our commitment to the project we're working on. It's what separates the real crafters from everyone else. Let me know in the comments if you've ever subjected your fingers or any other part of your body for that matter to a hot glue burn, all for the good of a craft project. Was it worth it? I think it was. I think it's a badge of honor that you should wear with pride. You're gonna work your way row by row, going from the inside of the link around to the outside until your rows of twigs meet each other. When you find some empty spaces, just use some bits and pieces of leftover twigs to fill up those empty spaces. Just an FYI, if you do find yourself with a ton of those hot glue spidery strings all over your twigs, you can gently and carefully run a lighter across the surface of your twig link and that will burn up a lot of those and just make them disappear. After you finish, give the project a nice and generous coat of spray sealer to protect it and to keep little pieces of tree from shedding. And this is how this piece turned out. I love this so much. This looks so high end and even though it looks different than the Pottery Barn driftwood chain that it was inspired by, I feel like no one would believe you made this out of $1 foam hair rollers and twigs from your backyard. How great is that? I think depending on what your twigs look like, this can be rustic or coastal decor. Either way, it's gorgeous and you should make this right now. I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY, and if you'd like to see more DIYs, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife, and crafting is my medication.